Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be working on my uh, service truck. Um, I was out on a job a couple weeks ago and uh, blew out a cylinder seal on the crane. So I got to fix that. Um, got to replace a pin on there. Um, I got to get that thing back in service. So that's, that's what we'll be working on today. Um, I know you guys will probably have some questions about the truck. It's kind of weird. Uh, so I'll go over that uh, later on in the video give you kind of an overview of everything. Um, if you got any questions or anything, let me know in the comments. Uh, like and subscribe this video if you would, that'll help us out. So uh, we'll get after it. So here's what we're dealing with on the Pell finger. This pin, there was a pin in here, and apparently the cotter pin fell off at some point driving down the road, so I lost this pin. Uh, this bolt I just had in here to try to get it back in there temporarily until uh, I get a new pin in. So what happened was these few sections right here slid out put a bunch of stress on my tube. It looks like it started to crack my fitting here. So that was the secondary issue. The, the first uh, problem I had right here was uh, this cylinder, the seals completely blew out of this thing. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is get this secured uh, back into here for now. Uh, till I get a pin, just use this, and then uh, I'm gonna, we'll need to get this cylinder pulled off of here and uh, brought into the shop so we can rebuild it. So part of the problem with this truck that I have is that it just has too much suspension on it. It drives really terrible, uh, so it bounces all over the place down the road and you get a lot of stuff that loosens up. You can see up here, this cylinder, this cylinder is supposed to be attached up here uh, into this channel. Um, so we're going to need to recut a bracket and get that thing bolted back up. So how these pal fingers work is they got multiple sections here that it just keep extending out on, on themselves. Uh, they have sequencing valves built into all of these cylinders, so when one section extends, gets to its limit, the, the following section will go. Um, if it didn't have those sequencing valves, it, hydraulic pressure is just going to go past the least resistance, and what it would do is it would extend this section first, which is the easiest to push out, but also holds the least amount of weight. So when you're picking heavy loads at close distances, uh, you obviously want your biggest section to extend first. Um, and then this thing would have tons of hydraulic hoses extending to all the cylinders because this boom will reach out to 70 feet. So uh, how this works is they'll bring in hydraulic fluid through this first uh, cylinder on your extension and then it sequences through inside the cylinder and back out to each subsequent cylinder. It's a pretty cool design. Um, I really like these cranes when they work. Uh, there's, there's a lot to them. There's a lot to inspect on all of them too. And had I done a better job, this, this wouldn't have happened. Um, your own equipment as some of you might know, it usually gets neglected and abused. Um, that's pretty much the case for this thing. Um, but also when it goes down, you need it and you got to kind of drop everything to get it back going again.
We got our uh, four hydraulic lines off of this cylinder. Uh, we got three up here at the top and then uh, our one cylinder at the base. Um, so what's kind of unique about this situation is normally a double acting cylinder you would just have two hoses connect to it, connected to it. This has four because you're cycling the oil through this cylinder and then once the cylinder is all the way extended it continues out out this portion to the next cylinder. Um, what you'll kind of see when we take this thing apart is here's our, uh, our rod of our cylinder and there's our seals that are blown out but even inside this rod this is hollow um, there'll be another tube inside there that extends fluid um, out to the end of this. You'll see that once we get it inside. All right, we got our cylinder taken off. Uh, we got it loaded on our cart. If you guys ever see these carts online, cheap, buy it up. It was pretty ugly when I bought it. You can see it here. Um, did some modifications to it, added, added our touch to it, and some flat black paint. She looks pretty good. Uh, this thing will actually haul like 2,000 pounds on the bed. It's like a golf cart, but way better. 48 volt. These things are awesome. All right, we got it clamped in the vise. Um, there's a spanner wrench to take this cap off. I don't have one that, that's the right size. And it looks like the guy before me didn't have the right size either. So there's marks in there from a pipe wrench. So I don't feel so bad this time. Normally I'd try to make up a spanner wrench, but since it's already gouged up a little bit, it doesn't really matter. Got our drip pan underneath to catch any oil that's going to come out. I think I'm going to spray some brake cleaner on here just to clean that up. We don't get any of that junk down into the cylinder. So we got the gland of the cylinder off, or at least disconnected from the tube. Uh, inside here is where our seals are bad, um, letting oil uh, pass our pressure seal and then it was blown out of our wiper seal. All right, we got our uh, rod out of our cylinder assembly. 
Uh, maybe you can see in here. Maybe not. Let me grab a flashlight. So you can see somewhat in there that tube. That's what runs down the length of our rod uh, to feed oil like I was talking about for uh, sequencing these cylinders. So, so here's our gland. We got to get that off. Uh, that slides all the way down this rod and we got to get this piston assembly off of here. Uh, on most cylinders, uh, there's a nut at the bottom to pull this off, but like I was saying, that rod goes in this hole. So um, looks like the way that this is mounted on there, there's a set screw on the bottom of here, which conveniently I got it in the vise upside down. I think I'll just try to pull that set screw out and it looks like it unthreads, uh, judging by the uh, teeth mark that marks that are on there from a pipe wrench. Probably just take it off the same way. Usually this process isn't so messy, but there's so much oil inside of here and then this whole thing is filled with oil. Usually you can capture a lot of it, but I didn't do a very good job. Soaked my gloves. It's not going well. We got our little set screw out. It's hollow. Hopefully it's not broken. That would be terrible. We'll give this thing a turn and see how it works. All you hydraulic cylinder guys are probably cringing right now, but this surface doesn't really matter as long as it's clean when it goes back in. It doesn't matter if it's marred up a little bit. It's pretty tight. I should make sure there's not another set screw or anything on there. Usually, these set screws are not hollow. It almost does look broken off, too. Ah, man. Um, I think I'm going to try to flip this cylinder over. Well, it's good news. The, uh, so that screw's not broke off, it's just really short. So I guess I just gotta put some more force on that thing to get it to turn. What I really didn't wanna do is have set screw half stuck in there and then smear it over with the pipe wrench and get it all jammed up. Okay, got it secure back in the vise. I guess we just gotta put our back into it a little bit. See how this goes. Mm. Nice. Well, inside our gland, you can see uh, this is all smeared seal up in this area. There shouldn't be any seal in that portion. Uh, you can see uh, right there, we're just missing a huge chunk out of our pressure seal in there. So we'll go uh, get this cleaned up in the parts washer a little bit and start disassembly. So this here is the seal that actually holds all the pressure. Um, yeah, that's not going to hold any pressure. Pretty, pretty dry rotted and disintegrated. These, uh, pal finger cranes run on 4,500 PSI. So your seals are pretty critical. That's a lot of pressure to hold back in these cylinders. It's pretty insane. The amount of weight that, uh, these truck mounted cranes can, can pick. So this, this is your last seal. It's called a wiper seal. Pretty much all it does is clean any dirt and debris off of that rod as it's telescoping back into the uh, cylinder uh, just to keep any contaminants 
out of your hydraulic fluid. And on the outside of this, just an O-ring and a backer. So that's all the seals out of your gland assembly. I'll get this cleaned up the rest of the way, uh, wipe out the inside, and then uh, we'll get the seals back in. On this piston, you got hydraulic fluid under pressure on both sides of this. Uh, whereas on here, you're only getting high pressure fluid on the bottom side. So uh, the cylinder, um, sorry, the seal only holds pressure from one side. That's a thick seal. That's going to be fun getting the new one on. So if you guys are going to attempt uh, rebuilding hydraulic cylinders, you should invest in these tools. Uh, I got these, I think, at Harbor Freight. Um, it's like a little spoon at the end. Uh, no sharp edges on it or anything, because so, you don't really want to nick your seals when they're going back in. All right, now we're ready for reassembly. That went better than I thought it would. Got all our seals on the inside and outside. That thing is ready to go. Well, our little set screw ended up in the same spot, so I guess that's a good sign. Must mean we're all the way seated. All right, we got that rod still inside here, so we got to get this pulled out um, before we can put our rod back into that cylinder. Otherwise, at the end, this rod is just laying on the bottom, so when you go to push this into the cylinder, you'll just crush this whole assembly. All right, I'm going to get one more clamp on the table right here because we're going to be pushing on the other end of this tube. I don't want it to slide off the table here. I'm going to switch gloves. Those latex gloves are nice for keeping oil off you, but once they get oil on them, you can't grip anything. So the key here is to get this in as straight as possible by yourself without cutting any of your new seals. Kind of walk it in a little bit. This is really a two-person job. We got one more O-ring on the bottom side of this. Just gotta pop that off real quick. Maybe. All right, it's cleaned off. Get our hole open back up. We 
make sure we're all clean. Dang it. Second time I dropped my rag into the oil pan. my wrench. Yep. Well, it's back together. Man, I really wish I would have collapse that cylinder before I just put that thing back together. It's probably going to be airlocked now. Oh well. All right, we got it seated back in the cradle. Ah, really wish that stupid thing would have been in there. Uh, now I just got to get, I got to get that rod uh, back into that cylinder. So here we are, uh, got the cylinder back in, um, all that should be good. My issue now is these tubes have um, a flare on the end of them and this one you can kind of see, well you can see it pretty good, the flare is pretty much gone. Um, so that's not going to seal against this JIC. Um, I'm going to go run into the shop, see what I got. Um, see if I got another one of these tubes. Quickly losing daylight. 
man here's another cylinder you can see that's what they start to look like when they blow up so many cylinders on this stupid thing i replaced this one last year uh i got this crane um i found it online for real cheap it was like seven thousand dollars the guy i bought it from was kind of a jerk i uh talked to him ahead of time said i wanted to buy it we negotiated it to six grand and then i drove two hours to get it and uh when i got there he said he would only take seven thousand dollars because he had someone else call and offer him seven grand so i thought that was kind of a a jerk move uh i really wanted to tell the guy off but seven grand for a pal finger crane even though it's old things like 20 some years old but man it picks some weight this thing has saved me so many times so i paid it this is the first time it really let me down in a situation so we'll get this put back together i don't want to put a ton of money into this thing because i feel like at any point something catastrophic could happen and I'm not going to put a ton of money into it. Worst case, I'd start looking for another one. Everything's back together, except for this tube with the bad flare. So I looked in the shop. I can't find an extra tube anywhere. I thought I had one. I might spend the rest of the night looking for it. I'd like to get this thing back in operation. Uh, a couple more things we got to do tomorrow. We got to get a bracket. Um, to hold this up into that unistrut, um, figure out a better way to stop it from coming off. I don't know if red Loctite is, is that's even enough. Um, it's not the first time that's happened. So we'll do that. Probably going to end up ordering some of these tubes from Palfinger to replace these bent up ones. Uh, got to get a couple pins made up to replace. I know that's a grade five bolt, uh, that's sketchy, uh, right here. So, uh, we'll make up a couple pins on the lathe, unless I got the right size. We'll see. So not too bad. A few hours to get that thing rebuilt. Got to hook up that hose too. We won't forget about that. Wish we had some more daylight, but, um, by the time I get everything cleaned up, It'll be, it'll be dark. Hey guys, we're back. Uh, day two. Uh, ended up uh, searching the shop and found that extra tube that I thought I had. So we'll be able to finish up the hydraulic portion of the uh, crane today. Uh, it's Sunday. I need to get the truck back in service for tomorrow. I've um, got a lot of work to do. Um, I don't really need the crane, but I just need the truck operational. I want to be able to fold that thing up and uh, not have anything leak. Um, I didn't, I didn't find any material to make pins for those two cylinders that have bolts in them. Uh, I'm just going to put nuts on them for now and I'll get some material in here and we'll put those in at a later date. Today we got a fab up uh, bracket. We'll cut something out on the plasma table. I think it'll work to, uh, to hold the back end of that one cylinder into that channel uh, so it can slide and not sag all the time. Um, I think that's it. We're pretty close. We'll get back at it.
All right, here's our bracket that we uh, cut out. Slides in this channel here. It attaches to this cylinder. So I keep having issues with these things loosening up. I'm gonna double nylock nut, lock washers, and I think I'm even gonna do red Loctite. And if that doesn't work, I'm selling the truck. So it'll be for sale. Man, that hurts. Well, the second nut bottomed out before it hit the nylon, so I guess it's not double nylock nut, it's just double nutted, double thread locker, so we'll see how it does. All right, I think we are all wrapped up. I'm going to fire up the truck, uh, get the PTO turned on, and then see if we can get this boom back in sequence. Uh, I'll check for leaks, obviously. Uh, I double checked everything and I think it's all tight. I don't know, we'll see. Here's a little background on the uh, service truck. This thing started life in 2002 as a 102 foot uh, ladder truck. Um, I bought it out of Monroe, North Carolina. Uh, it had some damage to the basket area where they'd actually hit some power lines with it. And uh, it, the damage didn't look too bad, but it actually was about $120,000 to repair it. So they ended up sending it to auction. I bought this thing, uh, did some modifications. I didn't need the ladder portion, so that didn't really bother me too much with the damage. Added the Pelfinger crane. I uh, added a, uh, a traction winch to the back of it, which uh, I really like these winches. They have 400 feet of line on that drum right there on top. And the way a normal winch would work is the more line you have on your drum, the less power you have. But with the traction winch, I have two drive rollers right down here uh, where all of that cable uh, winds between the two drums and just works off the traction. And then it'll pull line from this. This is just basically stored, storing the line. So I have constant power no matter how much line I have out. And it's really nice to have uh, 1400 feet. I mean, sometimes I get into some recoveries and stuff where my truck would normally get stuck, but I don't have to put it in a bad situation. Uh, sorry about all the oil on the thing. That, that crane really did a number on the truck. Needs a bath. So, I added the drop axle, the steerable drop, because um, once I took that uh, ladder section off the truck, it put a lot of weight onto my steer axle. I ended up 
after uh, getting everything mounted that I wanted, I was at 24,000 pounds on the steer, which it's rated at 26,000, but where I live, uh, 20,000 is the max on a steer axle. So I added this thing and uh, I keep it about uh, 16,000 pounds on the drop. So it, uh, it really did take a lot of weight off of that front and it also gave it, gave it a lot better ride. I added these uh, minimizer toolboxes and minimizer, minimizer fenders. Um, corrosion sucks and I haven't found a toolbox yet doesn't corrode from all the road salt um, so I'm happy with these ones they are all plastic with stainless hardware so uh, they've worked out pretty good so far this is our custom uh, back end that I built uh, pinnel hitch heavy duty pinnel hitch to tow our tag trailers work lights all over this thing uh, one of the downsides to how I built this truck is I didn't have a lot of room for tools like a like a typical service truck does which uh, mostly uh, this was it for tool storage so I ended up uh, utilizing some space in the back seat uh, I took out two of the seats back here and added two uh, toolboxes um, I really didn't need that much seating, so I got uh, the three seats back here. I actually got this um, seat out of a Tahoe and mounted it in here so it's a little more comfortable than the original seats. This thing's got a uh, Series 60 Detroit, all pre-emissions, 75,000 miles on it. So it's barely even broken in. Uh, it's got an Allison transmission, big Allison, which kind of scares me because when that thing needs to be replaced, big money. Uh, the inside I didn't do too much to. Uh, kept all the gauges and everything the same, but uh, added an iPad up on the top for directions and everything. This thing, this truck has been awesome for me. Um, it's done everything I needed it to do. It gets abused at times and sometimes overloaded, but it's got power. It's got uh, 550 horsepower and it pulls. It pulls whatever you put behind it. So I've I'm, I'm been pretty happy with it. The ride is rough, but that's kind of what you get with, a, with an old fire chassis. Uh, this thing's got a triple frame and just basically no suspension on the rear end. It's, it might as well be just bolted right, right to the frame. But uh, I think that's pretty much it. The repair was successful. Um, I got a little drip from a fitting that uh, didn't thread on quite right. And uh, I think just the threads are messed up. So I'm gonna order that from Pellfinger on Monday. Um, but all in all, it was a success. Uh, the, the seals that we did, everything was perfect, so. If you guys haven't already, uh, if you would, just subscribe so I, uh, I know this is the content you're looking for and we can bring better videos in the future. Thanks again.